Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Palette of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the latest issue of Warhammer 40k Combat Patrol. Now, as per usual with any of the videos, if you like them, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All the good stuff, it really, really helps out and it's much, much appreciated. So, before we jump into this week's issue though, quick word, um, this will be a little bit different. Um, I'll, I will apologise if the editing's a bit off because I'm having to do it all through my phone. Um, my PC has died, essentially, at the moment. Uh, there may be a fix for it, which I'm going to try on the weekend. I haven't got the time to at the moment. Um, it may may not work. If it doesn't work, I have to order a new one. So we'll have a couple of weeks like this where it's a bit rubbish. And I'm having to use um, CapCut to edit the videos which isn't really what I want to do, um, but it's, you know, the cards I've been dealt at the moment. So I think my PC's died because of a RAM issue. Um, I'm going to try and fix it. I think it's been telling me for a while because it's been having a few problems. Um, but yeah, it just is what it is. Um, we'll see if we can bring it back to life. If not, then yeah, a new one's on the cards. Although that one's only four years old, which is really, really crap. Now, Going back to good old 40k. So, this week is issue 5 of Combat Patrol magazine. Obviously, it is our exclusive mini week, but before we get that, we also do get 6 of our D6 dice. So, very, very straightforward. Obviously, you're not going to worry too much about them. We've already had some. So, good stuff there. Going forward, though, obviously, we do have our new Space Marine Sergeant. So our Infernus Marine Sergeant, pretty damn cool. Um, you have the option to give him a helmet or not give him a helmet. Personally, I'm going with the helmet. Um, it looks better in my opinion. You do also get that kind of smouldering corpse of a Tyranid at his feet, which is pretty cool. Quite like that. It's a nice little touch to the mini, which is always really, really good. And obviously, as you can see, not a lot of pieces to it, so it's fairly straightforward to do, which is always good fun. So, happy days. Going into this week's issue, though, we are first greeted by a how-to-build guide for the Infernus Marine Sergeant. Fairly straightforward, obviously. Right, going into the magazine, obviously we are greeted by a how-to-build guide for our Infernus Marine. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. There's not that many parts to it. However, make sure you are trimming them nicely. Make sure you're not breaking anything. Um, and dry fit everything. It makes life a lot easier if you dry fit it to make sure it's going to fit nice and snug. And you can trim off where you need to and everything like that. Um, you don't need a lot of glue for all of it. And you may need the whole pieces together though. But Otherwise, it's fairly, fairly straightforward. You can't go wrong for it with it. Um, it's not a push fit mini this week. Um, it's a regular mini. So there will be a few bits that you need to kind of get right. So especially things like the arms, just make sure you're lining them up properly and I'm sure you'll smash it. Not a problem. Pretty good stuff though. So obviously you do get the base with it as well. So you're going to have that no problem at all. And once it's done, it's going to look pretty cool. So happy days with that one really good stuff and yeah a pretty cool mini isn't it so it's a because it's the exclusive mini obviously it looks pretty snazzy you can't get this mini with any other set it only ever comes with this magazine so if you got good old um imperial magazine you had a different sergeant so you had a normal kind of regular uh good old primary sergeant if you got Stormbring magazine, we had at the exclusive good old uh, Praetor captain, uh, sergeant, lieutenant, one of the two, I can't even remember anymore. Um, and if you had Mortal Realms, we had an exclusive Stormcast for them as well. So we're getting quite a few exclusive minis with these magazines. It's really, really cool stuff. Obviously, they do sell for a bit on eBay. So if you've missed out on getting the issue, uh, in all honesty, you're going to pay probably 20 quid for that mini which isn't great, and I do not approve of people scalping. That has always been a kind of thing for me. Don't approve of it. Anywho, going on, we have our technique pages for painting. So 
all to do with base coating. So if you're new to the hobby, this is the type of stuff you'll need to learn and need to know about how to utilize all your base coats and do different things with them. So it's all to do with your block colors. So you're gonna do kind of large block colors. So you can either do it in one color. So for instance, like this Liberator, it's just currently black. Over time, there will be a base coat of Retribute Armor on there, and then it will get laid up over that after time. So that's kind of how base coating works. You base coat, even in small sections, you're still base coating to build up the color over time. And then you do your highlights on top of it and such like. So very, very straightforward. But if you are new to the hobby, take your time with it. Follow the guide. It does steer you in the right direction, in all honesty. If you're a bit more of an old hand at the hobby, then you're probably not going to care that much about this section of the magazine. Going into the rest of the how to paint section, though, we get our how to paint the Infernus Marine Sergeant. Um, it's fairly straightforward. As long as you're following the guide, if you're new, this isn't going to do too badly for you. If you're painting different colours, you can do. If you want to do it in a different style, you can do. It's entirely up to you how you want to go about doing it. Just have a bit of fun. That is the main thing. But once you're done with it, it's going to look fairly good. This also kind of prompts you to update all our other cut minis. So update your rest of your Space Marines and updating the Tyranids themselves. It's up to you how you want to go about doing it. Um, just have a bit of fun. But otherwise, when you're done, though, you're going to have something that looks like that. Obviously, these are not finished minis. You will need more paints later on. So as the paint issues come along, this, these minis will get updated as well. So you'll get things like Retributorama, Lead Belcher and such like that, that will kind of add to that colour scheme and build up over time. Away you go. Happy days. Going on, we get more lore to do with 41st Millennium. So if you are completely new to this and you want a bit of background as to what the hell is going on in Warhammer 40k, we get more information about it, so we get the Imperial Tithe. So the Imperium of Man is a vast and hungry beast. Its constant campaign of conquest demands unending resources. Resources that are provided by the Imperial Tithe. Some planets pay the Imperial Tithe in raw materials, while others provide warriors. If a world fails to pay its tithe, the consequences are dire indeed. So, every Imperial world, from frontier outposts to the colossal hive world, must pay the Imperial tithe. It falls to each planetary governor to gather the tithe. Should they fail, they are replaced. Many governors work their populations to the bone to extract the Imperial tithe forcing their citizens to toil day and night and shipping off vast populations to serve in the Astra Militarum. The collection of the Imperial Tithe is essential, for without it, the Imperium's armies would falter. So, the Imperium Man obviously spans a lot of planets in the 41st millennium, and um, to kind of populate and kind of assure, ensure the safety, or relative safety, of these worlds, it has to have a lot of resources, a lot of manpower, and yeah, a lot goes on with it. So pretty cool stuff. It's pretty interesting as well to have a bit more information about that. Going on to the other page where we get information about the black ships. So if you are a psyker in the Imperium, it is a dark fate indeed. Regardless of where they are born, Almost every single psychically sensitive human in the Imperium is property of the Adeptus Astrata Telepathica. This much feared organization stalks for stars, filling their holds of their dreaded black ships with captive psychers. So, this is a little bit more where it's a bit more sinister and how the 41st millennium is a very kind of dark, it's a dark sci fi kind of universe. Um, so, if you are psychically attuned and you are essentially linked to the warp, which is where chaos resides. Now, the warp can provide people with abilities. So if you played Space Marine 2, you've seen a few psychers in that as well. So they have abilities, whether it's seeing the future, telepathically being able to send messages from one end of the galaxy to the other, or 
you know, blindly navigating ships, they can do quite a lot of stuff. So quite interesting. And this is where the librarians and such like that, they are psychers, they come into it later. But pretty cool stuff there. Uh, but obviously they need to be rounded up because they need to be made sure that they can kind of be controlled um, to kind of hopefully slow the spread of chaos. Hopefully. We hope. Anywho, moving on, we get more information about our Canal Infernus Marine Sergeant. So the thing with the Infernus Marine Sergeant, as you'll notice there, he has a red helmet. Considering the rest of him is blue, why has he got a red helmet? Well, this tells you. So, every chapter has its unique heraldry used to honour its champions. Sergeants of the Ultramarines, for example, wear red helmets, allowing their fellow troops to recognise these beacons of command even in the thick of battle. So, obviously a sergeant is higher rank than the regular Space Marine, so they need to be identifiable on the battlefield. So, if they have a red helmet, Sticks out like a sore thumb, really, doesn't it? So, you can they utilize that as a way of kind of being a rally point and a focal point, and obviously being able to kind of relay commands and everything like that. Through so, pretty cool stuff. On the other side of the page, though, we do get to kind of name our unit, of course, as well, which is always really, really good fun. And you don't have to use any of the names on here if you don't want to, you can use online name generators. It's up to you. Have a bit of fun with it. Going on, though, we have our play section. So the play section gives us, obviously, our good old new Infernus Marine Sergeant, who never gives up. He is the sole survivor, and he's uh, behind enemy lines. So he needs to cause a bit of chaos, because he is an Infernus Marine. He is going to burn as much as he can, uh, when he can. So really good stuff there. And... With this, you are going to need some of your cards. So if you remember, we had obviously a load of cards, including the data cards. And we had these four good old infestation sites. So you are going to need those to play the game. Put them on your map, kind of as shown here. And it's all about destroying them and hopefully not getting killed in the process of doing it. Have a bit of fun with it. It walks you through how to play it. Very, very straightforward. Very, very simple. And yeah, you can't go wrong with it. It's going to be really good fun. Obviously, you have different victory conditions for it. And you can modify everything as well. And obviously, over time, we're going to get loads of rules, basics, and everything like that. How to play the game. So you're not having to just rely on these guides. You can take it off, play with any of the different factions that you're going to get. And have fun with the game. Which is really cool. So... Going forward, though, obviously, this is just the beginning of Combat Patrol. Uh, not a lot to say about it. We will get more and more as we go, and we're going to get some really cool units. We don't get everything on this page, obviously, uh, because that would be an absolute bargain if we did. But we will get quite a few bits and pieces from this. So we do get Terminators. We get the Librarian. We're going to get um, good old uh, Chaplain on bike. We've got some other bits and pieces to come. We have more Tyranids to come, including the Psychophage and the Parasite and Mortex, Mortrex. Really cool stuff. And then if you want to expand your armies, you can do, and I will do a video where I go through all of that, if you wish to, anyway. Going on, though, next week we get five Barb Gaunts. So these are Tyranid minis that have a parasitic creature linked to them that fires bigger projectiles, which is pretty weird and nifty. So, yeah, not bad. Issues 7 and 8, part 1 and part 2, of our bigger swarm of Tyranids. So, because we do get quite a lot of Tyranids with this magazine's run. Um, so, we get the good old uh, Termagants and Ripper Swarms. So, we get part 1 and part 2. Um, there's 10 minis in total. Well, 11, I think. Or 12, um, should I say. So, we get the Ripper Swarms and we get the Termagants. They're really cool. They're going to be very straightforward. They are your fodder, essentially. Um, but that won't be all the Tyranids. So there are more to come, which is really good stuff. And then, obviously, we're going to get some more Space Marines. We're going to get some more good old good guys. We're going to get some Eldari. We've got some good old Chaos units. We have Orcs. We have Leagues of Votan. Really good stuff. Nine factions in total for this magazine's run. And, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see all of it. So happy days. Anyway. 
that is enough from me. Thank you very, very much for watching. As I said at the beginning of the magazine, if this editing's been a bit crap, uh, it's because I'm having to do it all through my phone. It is what it is. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you sometime soon. Bye-bye now.